We went to France uh, in November last year, a group of uh, farmers. The things that we saw were devastating. I don't think there was one person who came back from that trip who was not uh, seriously affected by what we saw. Speaking to the farmers, speaking to the vets in all the countries in Northern Europe where they've had the disease, in Holland, in France, in Belgium, in Germany, we know firsthand from them, that from them how devastating this disease is. Uh, so we have to really, really take this disease seriously. It's not just one that's going to come and go and we're not going to know anything about it. It's vital that all livestock are vaccinated. So it's essential that you vaccinate all of your livestock, but also speak to your neighbour and find out whether they're planning to vaccinate their livestock as well. Only if we can get nearly 100% coverage of all livestock vaccinated can we be sure that we can stop this disease in its tracks. It's spread by midges of the Culicoides species. These are the little ones that bite you and I when we have barbecues at night in the UK. It passes actually through the midges and it actually replicates in those midges. When it overwinters and it starts early in the year, which it will do in 2008, when the temperatures are high, when the midges are around, then it will build up to a very high dense level in the midges and it'll cause an enormous amount of problems. So what we saw in 2007 is no reflection of what we would expect and we will see in 2008 unless we vaccinate our animals. In Germany there were over 3,000 new premises being infected with blue tongue a week. So it's swept down through Germany, it's gone into Switzerland, it's Czech Republic, Denmark, it's swept down through France. There were nine cases in 2006, some sort of 15,000 or thousands of cases in France in 2007. It's gone through Belgium, it's gone through, through, through Holland, infected nearly all the animals. So it's moved extremely quickly because once the midges get infected and you get a high density, of a high percentage of midges that become infected, they just move very quickly and there's nothing we can do about it. We can't stop the midges. Now they had no vaccine that year so they couldn't stop the disease. We now have vaccine available so we can actually stop this disease. In sheep it causes a lot of problems. It causes them to be lame, it causes them to have lesions in their mouth, swollen lips um, and in serious cases uh, it causes their heads to swell up, it causes them to have edema fluid around their body um, and it will cause them to die. In Belgium they lost about 10% of their she total sheep population. In cattle the symptoms aren't as severe as in sheep, although it will kill some cattle. However the indirect signs that you see in cattle are more serious. There's a big milk yield problem and you get a lot of fertility problems, a lot of stillborn calves, a lot of abortions, a lot of resorbed fetuses. So there's a lot of underlying problems we don't necessarily see in cattle that obviously cause a lot of economic losses. So vaccinating an animal against blue tongue, it's vitally important first of all that the animal is well restrained so that you can administer the vaccine easily and safely. Once the vial is broached, the vaccine needs to be used within eight hours. Then we can administer the vaccine under the skin. Over here on the ribs where uh, a piece of skin can be pulled out is most appropriate. So the vaccine is administered subcutaneously, injected in and withdrawn. And because the virus can be spread by an infected needle and syringe, it's vitally important that a new needle is used each time so the old needle should be disposed of accordingly. When vaccinating a large number of animals, it's probably more appropriate to use a multi-dosing gun. Because of the possibility of spreading the disease via the needle, it's vitally important that you use either the gun supplied by the vaccine manufacturer or by a special gun designed by Stereomatic. This gun works by sterilising the needle after each administration. So again, we vaccinate the animal that's under the skin, the needle dispensed, and the vaccine administered. The vaccine multi-dose gun comes with a special sterilization cap which needs to be replaced after every 100 vaccinations to ensure that the needle is sterilized appropriately. Likewise, the needle itself should be replaced after about every 100 animals have been vaccinated. When vaccinating sheep, it's important that the sheep gets the full dose. So to achieve that, the animal needs to be well restrained 
the vaccine should be given under the skin, so parting the fleece so that the skin can be visible is important. Tense the skin up so that a pocket is formed underneath the skin and then the vaccine can be applied. Using the steromatic gun, it requires depressing the needle and depressing the plunger. My message to farmers who are reluctant to vaccinate is please get on, get the vaccination done. Our only way forward to eradicate blue tongue really is to go for a 100% vaccination programme. It's going to combat the suffering and the stress that we saw in France with both sheep and cattle.